usually in games, the goal is to not immediately die so that you can, you know, play the rest of the game. But as we covered previously on this channel many moons ago, there are plenty of games that will readily murder you right near the start. Whether you're playing some poor sap who gets killed off before the protagonist arrives, or you're brutally killed only to be brought back to life through some weird in-game lore. And we've found loads more, so watch out for even more games that will kill you right at the start. R.I.P. you. But we're spoilers for the beginning of the following games. Anchors away! Come on, we're here. At the Crab Coast. How long was I asleep? Far too long. Now come on. Get your ass out of the cabin. I'll go and wait for you on the shore. Risen 3 Pirate Lords is the third in the Risen series of supernatural pirate action RPGs, and sees you playing as the son of Captain Gregorius Steelbeard, a pirate legend from Risen 2. Sidebar, where are they getting these pirate names, and can I have one? The game kicks off with a bang with your ship under attack from the ghost of a pirate called Crow, and things are looking grim for a while, particularly as I'm talking about this in the context of a video about times you die right at the start of the game. Fortunately though, this all turns out to be a dream, and before you know it, you're awake, hanging out with your sister who appears to be wearing a sexy pirate Halloween costume, and running around on a sandy white beach killing massive crabs. You know, pirate stuff. Before long, however, you're distracted by a skull cave in some ruins, and further distracted by something called a Shadow Lord, who emerges from a portal in the cave, and even more distractingly, consumes your soul before wandering off. But hey, that doesn't mean you're dead, right? People can live without a soul, surely? I mean, look at Fox News. Ah, short game. Or it would be if that's where it ended. Luckily for you, you get resurrected by a passing witch doctor called Bones, who informs you that while your body is technically alive, your soul is still trapped in the underworld, and you'll have to venture there to retrieve it if you want to be whole again. And so starts the rest of the game with you minus one soul, but plus a new sense of purpose, getting your soul back before you become a mindless minion of the shadows, aka a Fox News panelist. Pretty sure that's how they get started. So. There's something that we want to haul up. There were some current shifts. It showed up in an uncharted area. But it's a long way down. Nice. I like a good challenge. For folks who haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the game centers on fighters called Drivers who fuse with powerful beings known as Blades, and loads of them have extremely strong British regional accents. You don't close your mouth soon, you're gonna swallow a fly. Petition to have more Welsh accents in games immediately, please! You play as Rex, a salvager who gets hired by a bunch of drivers who need him to dredge something up from the watery depths. This excursion uncovers a long-forgotten vessel with a bunch of mysterious locked doors that these folks are, I guess, too stupid or lazy to open themselves? You. Open this door. Me? This door will only open to one of you people. One of me? What are you talking about? Hurry up and do it! We're not paying you to ask dumb questions. Uh, rude. At the end of this series of doors, Rex and his pushy clients discover a red-haired woman encased in a glass cabinet, like some kind of anime Snow White. And a sword that Rex can't help but reach out for because, I mean, come on, look how shiny it is. Hey, brat! Don't even think about touching that! Huh? <laughs> Ah, seems something happened there. Still, I'm sure that nothing bad will come of this, like one of the party rushing in and literally stabbing Rex in the back. Ah. Yes, though it's usually people with British accents who are the baddies in things, on this one occasion it turns out that it's the dude with the horned mask who actually isn't very nice, despite how hard he's trying to spin this. Don't take it personally. It's an act of mercy. At least you won't be alive to see what's coming. Smashing the sword before wandering off, this jerk Jin leaves Rex for dead. But like the Tamagotchi craze, Rex doesn't stay dead for long. 
In the afterlife, Rex meets the anime Snow White, who turns out to be a blade called Pyra. She breaks the news to him that he's dead, which he takes about as well as can be expected. Oh man, this is bad. Everyone in the guild is in danger. No, wait. I can't do anything if I'm dead. Titan's fucked. If I wasn't dead, I'd kick that guy's ass. You okay, hun? Pyra then offers up half of her life force to bring Rex back from the dead and help her on her quest. So when you're back on the controls, you're not only breathing, but also a fully fledged driver. Sounds about as difficult and unpleasant as a real life driving test, actually. of Commons. Whoever these men in black are, they've got brass bollocks to set up in the centre of government. Watch Dogs Legion is set in a chilling vision of London in the not-too-distant future where tyrannical technocracy is the order of the day and beatboxers roam the streets unchecked. Ugh. Against this backdrop of high-tech surveillance society, you recruit and play as a band of eclectic rebels with the skills required to stand up to the man. These various playable characters include hackers, drone pilots, beekeepers, and even violent elderly people. If you were unaware of this particular gimmick of Watch Dogs Legion, however, you might have been taken aback by the game's very first mission, in which you're playing as a James Bond-style deadsec operative called Dalton Wolf. Dalton, no time to waste. Yes, ma'am. In the mission, you're supposed to stop a rogue hacker group called Zero Day from detonating a bunch of bombs in the Houses of Parliament, which you do manage to do before it's revealed that this was all part of a larger false flag operation, and also, drones have machine guns on them now. Sorry about it. Oh my god. Dalton Wolf is shot to death, but then, of course, you get into Watch Dogs Legion proper and realise that you can burn through as many characters as you want without any repercussions. But still, it's shocking the first time it happens. Yeah. Much like being battered unconscious by an elderly woman with a stun bat on, I expect. We used to make beach budgies. Until the beaches were through. We still made pyramid pies. And we made some good scrap cakes, too. If there's one world you don't want to visit, it's Oddworld. At one point a civilization with rich cultural heritage created by the Madokans, Oddworld was taken over, industrialized, and ground through the capitalist machine by the Gluckans. <laughs> Glad that's not happening on this planet. Wait, why is everyone looking at me like that? Get back to work! Still, when you start up the first game, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, titular hero Abe is one of the many Muddercons working at the Glucken-owned Rupture Farms meat processing plant. While working late, Abe overhears a meeting of his bosses, and it's not good news. Turns out, having depleted the populations of other species on the planet, even driving one into extinction, in search of new profits, the Gluckens are going to turn Abe and his sweet subservient pals into munchable snacks. <laughs> I hope to god Elon Musk isn't taking notes. Abe recognises the danger he and his meat processing colleagues are in, so you spend the opening of the game escaping rupture farms and trying to help as many of your pals as possible. So it really sucks that as soon as you get out, this immediately happens. Then I fell. Down a cliff. and smashed my head. Although dead, Abe is luckily destined for greater things than just caving his head in on the floor, and a mystical Madokan brings him back to life, revealing to him that he must save the creatures on this planet and bring balance back to Oddworld. Which I guess would make it... even world? Boo! Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society lest we endanger all of our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. 
2004 cult classic role-playing game Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines definitively captures the experience of being initiated into the world of darkness as a fledgling lackey. Vamping it up among the scheming bloodsuckers of Los Angeles, working your way from a skeevy flat with a filthy mattress to a bougie downtown apartment with a personal servant. Your place is, um, nice. And while it is all very well and good, being a supernaturally powerful creature of the night, armed with powerful vampire magics and overwhelmingly sexy vampire sex appeal, being dead is kind of a condition of membership in what is known as the Kindred. As such, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines gets all that out of the way early doors by having your character, a normal human, hook up with one of these sexy vampires we're hearing so much about these days, who it seems has more on their mind than standard Netflix and chill. I want to show you something. I have a feeling it's not the Lord of the Rings extended cut. In fact, what they want to show you is the killing of you by them, and your transformation into a fledgling vampire, a process known as siring, which is as quick and effective as it is fabulously illegal in vampire society. As such, your sire is swiftly executed, and you only survive thanks to the intervention of the improbably named Nines Rodriguez. This is bullsh**! Still, you're now free to sexily vamp your way around LA without having to worry about pesky things like being unsexy, or aging, or disease. It is, however, going to do a real number on your dance skills. Egan, you okay? Needs us. Needs us to... to make it whole. Quit babbling. Let's just do this and get out of here. We've previously noted the very early death in the opening to Dead Space 3. You know, the one where Trooper Tim here gets early retirement. Oh, sorry, I was being euphemistic. I meant shot to death at point-blank range by his own general. Man, for an opening set on an ice planet, it has no chill. But turns out Dead Space 3 was merely copying the homework of Wii and PS3 on-rails shooter Dead Space Extraction. You kick off the game as engineer Sam Caldwell, working with his team to extract and transport a mysterious twisty artifact called a marker. This seems fine. And there it is. Before he sets off, Sam chats to his fiancée Lexine, who he's planning on seeing later for a romantic evening. Gotta go, honey. I love you. I love you too. Aw, that seems like a sweet relationship. Why do I get the feeling this isn't going to end well? Things naturally start to go awry as soon as the team tries to move the marker. You quickly discover that what just happened is that you got trapped with a bunch of people who seem to have lost their minds. People who proceed to try and kill you, like necromorphs, but without all the extra spiky limbs. Still just as horrible though, so... As well as people mindlessly trying to murder you and or themselves, you start to notice other unnerving things, such as whispers when you open doors. Your teammates trying to murder you. Egan, stop! What are you doing? And even your fiance's voice in your head. Jesus, hold it together. Eventually, you figure out that the marker is messing with your mind, having tricked you and your teammates into a bunch of murder. Oh God, I thought you were. I've got to get out of here. Back to Lexine. We have to stop it. You end up fighting off waves of possessed people, not entirely sure that they're even real, but determined to get back to your fiance who needs your help. I have to get to Lexine, do you hear me? She needs my help. <laughs> Nah. Called it. Tragically, poor Sam then gets shot by the next guy you'll be playing as in the game. And as far as this new guy is concerned, you've just been murdering innocent people. Why'd you do it, son? All these people never did anything there. In my defense, I'm playing an on-rail shooter, and on-rail shooting is pretty much the only thing I can do, so... <laughs> In Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, you play as Sissel, a spectral superhero who averts crime with his spooky ability to stop time and interfere with physical objects. 
From his unlife in the ghost world, Sissel can save lives by going back in time to the exact point of a person's death and then using the help of the ghost of a Pomeranian dog, swap items with similar shapes to help avert that death. It makes sense when you play it, honestly. The only issue with being a ghost detective is that you have to become a ghost in the first place, and so dying is kind of a prerequisite for the job. Luckily for you, Ghost Trick takes care of all of that for you, and you start the game both dead as a doornail and in the least dignified position possible. If you find me dead like that, you have to move me, okay? Deal. This serves as a handy tutorial because being a ghost is just as new to Sissel as it is to you, because in what might be the earliest death on this list, he died literally seconds before the game even began. Sadly, while you can possess objects, it doesn't work on your own corpse, because we're told it only works on non-living objects. Uh, I am a non-living object, ghost trick. That's the whole problem. So those were the times you died right at the start of the game. And to be honest, it wasn't your fault. They kind of did it to you. So don't don't feel too bad. Don't worry. We're all we're all in this together. But you made it to the end of this video and nothing terrible happened, I hope. I hope if I just jinxed it now. Everything's fine, right? Um, keep, let's keep things fine. Let's keep the, the, the good things going with a thumbs up. Uh, let us know in the comments if there's any of these uh, examples that you can think of and that we've not covered yet. And if you enjoyed this video, there's way more videos like it here to the side. And if you want to go one step further in supporting us, you can join our Patreon, the OX Supporters Club, and join our Discord and chat about cool things and games on there. Uh, but in the meantime, take care of yourselves and we will see you next time. Bye.